Hey everybody, I want to talk a little bit about the studio strings today. This is something that's a default plugin inside Logic. It comes with it. It's a, a really interesting. I like the promise of this plugin, the potential of it, but I've always found that it's a little bit lacking. Uh, and um, that's just partly because it just doesn't sound as good as some of the other string sounds out there. And when you work with it, you could EQ it and, and do other processing with it, but that doesn't always help. Sometimes it just makes it worse. And there's a number of reasons for that. I was introduced to the new split EQ from Eventide this week, and um, it finally clicked how we can make some of these like not as great sounding string sounds better. So here's what um, I'm working with. This just made this four bar loop so we can experiment. But let me play that for you. So that's one of the chamber ensembles. So sometimes it sounds like, ooh, that's a violin, that's a cello, that's a bass. And that's because they all are incorporated in the same instrument. But it actually sounds better than normal. Let me play this for you without the split EQ on, which it was on for that first one. But let me play without it so you can hear uh, just the, the basic string sound. There's a little bit of reverb, um, actually a bit of reverb, but this is with just the reverb on a bus and no other processing. And a little bit of interesting timing going on there, but we'll just do, turn it back on, the split EQ. Okay, so here's what's happening with this. What we have with the strings, uh, we just have a default sound. And um, when I turn off the EQ, it's boxier. It's like uh, it has a bunch of low mid frequencies that aren't really that um, easy to work with. They're, they're not pleasant a lot of times. It makes it sound like someone recorded too close and you're getting some weird proximity effect. And um, string sounds are all over the place. And in fact, look at this. This is um, from a book about frequencies. Look at this um, cello radiation pattern. 200 hertz goes forward, 250 goes backwards, 350 to 500 forwards, 800 kind of up, 1000 to 1250 more up, and then 2000 to 5000 in this like C shape. Now, that is what we're dealing with. And if you record too close to an instrument or in the wrong place, you're not actually getting a really natural sound. So a lot of times uh, we wanna record further away in a room so that all of the sounds that are radiating from the body of the cello, the front plate, the back, back plate, the top edges uh, can have a time to, to, they can have time to go out into the room and mesh back together and create the sound of a cello, like a recital hall. So this to me often sounds like it's just recorded too close in the wrong place. And, um, and so that's an issue. If I want to use these, I have to do a bit of work to make them sound better. Enter the split EQ. Now I'm not going to do a full tutorial on the split EQ. Let me just explain what it does. It splits out the sound into transient material and tonal material. And this for me is the, the was the big aha moment this week when I first uh, got this, is that I was thinking, what would I use this for? And all of a sudden it occurred to me, strings are the perfect thing to use this for because I can cut quite a bit of material out tonally. That's like the, the harmonics, the tone of the instrument that's too boxy. Uh, too thick, uh, without taking away some of that string sound, the sound of the bow on the string as the the, the resin um, scrapes across it and activates the strings. There's like this edginess to that, that if we start EQing, for instance, where this fourth band is, look how big I'm cutting out here in this top part. Um, 
is not getting rid of the transient part of the sound, the really interesting character. So I can do a lot of molding of the cello and the other stringed instruments without getting rid of the characteristic part of the sound. So now it's essentially like I'm changing the body of the sound, changing the mic quality, the, the recording quality, without changing the character of the instrument. So if I turn this off, you'll hear it again. And then I'm gonna turn it on partway through. And then we can fine tune the performance and things. Right now, this particular thing is just going through an arpeggiator and uh, we could turn down some of these parts that were really, so the, the blend of the notes, we would adjust this way. Let's play that again. So that needs a little bit of work, but overall, we're in a much better place now when I'm playing the strings. It just sounds so much better. Let's turn that back off. That almost sounds like a synthesizer or just a crappy keyboard. I can get a lot more nuanced sound now using this EQ. So all you do with this EQ, for instance, with uh, the fourth band here, the blue is the tonal, and I can pull that up or down, and then we can go through the other and adjust it. So for instance, there's the, the transient part of the fourth band. Now, with this, the bands are tied together in frequency. Um, I don't think I can actually separate those. So I'm working with this particular area with the fourth band, and then I boosted some of these transients with the fifth band uh, just to keep them separate. You can solo these out if you want, so you can hear exactly what we're doing, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to solo out the transients of the fifth band. Oh, and I'll just play this. So that's what got boosted. Let's just solo nothing for a second. And that's what we're dealing with without that. So we can actually solo things out, which is kind of cool. There's so many other features with this. You can pan things uh, separately with the transients and the tonal contents. So you can actually do like a stereo widener in a way. It's kind of interesting. Um, but I just really wanted to talk about making the strings better using this new system. And, um, if we're, if anybody's interested in this EQ, we can do a bigger tutorial about it later. This one area for me is a super game changer. Not that I'm going to use the studio strings a ton more. I have other orchestral libraries, but even with those other libraries, I'm going to use the split EQ to get it just right. So if I need, for instance, I have a cello part that's playing and I just want a little bit more of that string sound, like the, the bow as it pulls across, I don't have to boost up a ton of, or any of the tonal content. I can just boost up a little bit of that character part. Um, it's not perfect, but I definitely think that it's really interesting. And I think the, the ways we can use this EQ moving forward are going to really change how we're doing equalization. Next, what I wish even Ty would do next is allow me to do some of the artificial intelligence that's coming out with some of the other EQs where I say, uh, you know, look at that one piece of the sound right there, that one little thing. As it moves, as a string player plays different notes, I want you to move my EQ um, frequency automatically. I want you to, to go with it and keep going. Right now, this is just a, a fancy parametric EQ with a, another parameter, but it doesn't have any of the, the AI stuff or machine learning to help 
actually take this to the next level um, and figure out what's happening in a more dynamic way. Um, I think that that's, you know, a big potential for this. Now that we have all the pieces broken out, um, what can we do with having, a, you know, some sort of process or algorithm make our jobs even easier, right? Is that what we want? Maybe. I think that there are some situations when I would rather have a, a tool do something so I can focus on something else. But um, maybe let me know in the comments, what do you think of this and what parts of this do you like? And uh, uh, just looking at it very briefly, because we didn't really go through a lot of the settings at all. But um, I think, I hope you can see uh, and understand the basic concept I was trying to do here, talking about the, the tonal parts of a stringed instrument versus the transients and how it's nice to have separate control. Okay, that's it. See you guys.